Hey everybody, this is Benita with Lupus Life YouTube channel. Um, this is Before Lupus Part 2. And I know that, I just wanted to recap rather, Before Lupus Part 1 in the event that you have not yet seen it or you don't recall. But um, I just basically kind of gave a rundown or more of a descriptive rundown rather of everything that I've gone through in the past or at least the beginning of my run in medical history uh just kind of recap part one i talked about how again i'm going to be as honest as possible on these videos and as raw and uncut as possible um i'm telling my story the way i see it in my eyes from my perspective uh, i might mention other other people that I know or you know things like that but I'm not name dropping because their story is not my story to tell so for me I talked about how I have epilepsy um how when I got married in 2003 I was extremely excited uh, I talked about my miscarriage in 2006 on Christmas day um talked about my difficult pregnancy in 2008 my diabetes diagnosis all my random symptoms like the pain the rashes the fatigue and things like that um and how i thought that it was just my body changing um i also talked about how after i had my miscarriage in 2006 my sister my oldest sister uh told me that she was pregnant with her oldest daughter and how I was hurt by it, even though it wasn't her fault. I wasn't mad at her or anything like that, but I was just hurt in general, knowing that I had just had a miscarriage and a couple of days later, she was pregnant. Um, I was happy for her. It's just deep down inside, I was hurting. Um, I also talked about how after I had my daughter in 2008, I was completely emotionally disconnected to her, or from her rather. Um, I had postpartum depression um which i didn't really tell anybody about that initially but that's what happened uh so that's pretty much a very quick synopsis of before lupus part one uh now i'm going to start into part two and let me just say that sometimes you might see me looking down because i literally have like a bunch of notes and stuff i had to go through to make sure i hit a lot of the or most or all i would like to hit all of the key points that i want to talk about uh, because again everything that i talk about although it might seem irrelevant it does tie into my story down the line um so with Before Lupus start two, Part 2, right, I want to start off talking about how after I had my daughter, even though I was going through everything that I was going through before, eventually I got over my postpartum blues or postpartum depression. My husband and I decided that we wanted to start trying to have baby number two. Um, so we were unsuccessful in having baby number two. Um, it was just, for some reason, it just wasn't happening. Um, the attempts of course were great but actually being successful at it it just didn't happen um again being as transparent and raw as, as possible if it's tmi especially to some men it is what it is i don't have any, any control over that but during those unsuccessful attempts or near the end of the, us trying to have baby number two, my body started to change even more. And when I say it started to change, I mean in terms of like my periods at that point became really heavy and painful. And I just felt like it was a little man in there taking a sledgehammer to my uterus. Felt like my pelvic bones were breaking. And I'll, honestly, all of this felt worse than my labor or it felt what I would presume what labor pains felt like because I didn't feel any labor pains but again I didn't want to get on any birth control because I was still wanting to have a second baby so my doctor and I we were trying different you know medications to try to see exactly what would help but nonetheless no baby um in between this time or during this time rather i believe in seeing my doctors on a regular basis so i went to see my seizure doctor and 
he ran his normal labs because at this point I'm used to being a pin cushion. I'm always getting labs drawn either with him or any other doctor. Excuse me. So I had all these labs drawn, standard tests, and in pulling these labs, or rather, he found out that my protein levels were elevated. Now, protein levels being elevated was not something that was falls under his expertise category. So he sent me to a kidney specialist and got my kidneys tested and everything and everything came back to normal. From there, I went back to my primary trying to figure out what this was. She couldn't figure it out, so she sent me to an oncologist slash hematologist. Wasn't quite sure why I needed to see the doctor, that particular doctor at that point, but let me just insert this line right here. Anybody who has a lot of doctors knows it's very much so an inconvenience when you see a new doctor and you have to go through and explain all of your medical issues that you have up until that point. It's, I mean, my medical records are like this thick and trying to explain that over and over again, it gets really old and annoying. But nonetheless, I saw this oncologist and he ran a plethora of tests trying to figure out exactly what it is that was wrong. Um, MRIs, CAT scans, lab work, anything that you can think of, x-rays, all of that. Um, he didn't find anything that he, that really would have explained it. Um, I will say that he found a mass on my liver and which was benign, but I still have to go back to him like every six months to figure out what it is or to make sure it's not malignant, I should say. Um, he also did a bone marrow biopsy on me, trying to figure out what the deal is with my abnormal labs. So anybody that's ever had a bone marrow biopsy or knows someone that had a biopsy such as that or bone anything related to bone marrow, it's a very painful process. Very painful process. And I had it on my tailbone of all places. Um, so he did all those tests. He comes up with absolutely nothing. So... Keep in mind, I have all these previous issues that I've addressed in part one still going on. And I'm going through all of these tests and all these specialists trying to figure out what's going on with these elevated protein levels. And none of them can give me any indication as far as what it is. So um, while I'm going through all of this stuff, I've also at this point had all four wisdom teeth pulled at the same time. So imagine my mouth was all swollen. It looked like quagmire from Family Guy. Um, I also had my tonsils removed because, I, again, as discussed in part one, I kept getting sick. And when I get sick, it would be really, really bad. So I kept getting strep throat also. Could not figure out why I was just prone to all these different sicknesses or whatever. Um, also, in the summer of 2014... One day I was at home, you know, one evening, minding my business. All of a sudden, like, an anvil from Roadrunner, it just hit me, all this pain. And I broke out into a cold sweat. I was shaking. I was bent over in pain. I was almost in tears. I just could not figure out what the hell this was that was making me feel this way. And I didn't go to the emergency room the next day. I called my sister. She told me what it could have been. And she said it might have been a cyst. So the next day, I went to work. And I was still in pain. And then I went to the emergency room. And they told me that it was an ovarian cyst. And they tried to downplay it and say that it was a follicular cyst. I mean, it was really small. But it just didn't feel like that to me. So I went to my GYN thereafter. And she said, yes, it was a cyst. And... Most cysts, basically, they usually, most women, they shouldn't them. Is cysts are fairly common in women anyway because they usually happen right before a woman's period starts. But most women don't know that they have those cysts because they don't cause them any issues. In rare cases, a cyst will rupture. Um, and it is very painful. They get all this abdominal swelling and stuff like that. It's just very painful. Um... But again, that's what happened to me. And I dealt with these recurring cysts for years 
thereafter. So I'm going to go ahead and end part two right here. But again, quick recap. I have had seizures, miscarriage, difficult pregnancy, tonsils removed, wisdom teeth removed, all this unexplained pain, all these tests run, and things of that nature. Part three will give you a little bit more insight as to what all of this is. So again, this is Benita with Lupus Life. See you for part three.